Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Anna Manuel with Big Fox News. The man who set fire to the nativity scene at Wisner Park last December is sentenced. Daniel Peterson Green will serve one year in county jail. He was homeless when he intentionally set the fire on December 6th, destroying the nativity. A local family donated a temporary replacement, but now city leaders are working to have a permanent one installed just in time for the holiday season. Elmira police are looking for the driver involved in a hit and run last night. An Elmira woman suffered leg injuries after being hit on Horner Street around 830. If you have information, you're asked to call Elmira police. And Elmira police are investigating a stabbing that happened Sunday around midnight. Police say two men attacked a 37 year old Elmira man in the 400 block of Decker Place. One of the men pointed a gun in the victim's face and the other man stabbed the victim multiple times. The victim was taken to an area hospital for treatment and is expected to be OK. Police released the suspect's description. So the first is a light skinned male about 17 years old, 5'10", around 160 pounds. He had a short cropped afro and was wearing a maroon tracksuit. The second suspect, also about 17, 5'10", 160 pounds. He had a taller afro and wore gray sweatpants along with a long sleeved Marilyn Monroe T-shirt. If you have inf any information on that, you're asked to contact Elmira Police. The Kraft Heinz plant in Campbell will stay open a little longer than anticipated, but the company is still looking for a buyer for the plant and is keeping it operational until August 23rd. Earlier this year, we reported the plant would close by June, leaving around 300 people without jobs. It's been a long, drawn-out process. Kraft Heinz announced plans at the end of uh, November 2015 about that impending closure. Elmira High School will soon be the site of a major excavation project. Last night, the Department of Environmental Conservation announced plans to remove about 5,000 cubic yards of contaminated soil on school property and replace it. This is all to make way for major renovations. The DEC says the contaminated materials sit about 16 feet below the surface and are not a danger to anyone. The district says summer programs will not be interrupted. Work will begin around mid-June and last a couple of months. It is Vehicle Safety Week in New York State. That's a time when officials remind drivers to make sure their cars are safe for the summer driving season. It's also recommended drivers keep a summer travel safety kit in their car with windshield wiper fluid, jumper cables, a tire pressure gauge, hazard road markers, a flashlight, phone charger, water and snacks in case you become stranded. But here is what they encourage you to check. Your fluids, your tire pressure, battery life, and your windshield wipers. Well, you always want to check the weather before you travel too. Meteorologist Kim Walker will look ahead to the holiday weekend next in her Big Fox forecast. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Well, good evening, everyone. We started off with some patchy fog early in the morning, but that gave way to lots of sunshine today, and temperatures were quite pleasant climbing into the 70s. We're going to have more of the same tomorrow. We're going to start off with some fog once again, and then we're going to see partly sunny skies, but temperatures will remain pretty nice out there. But then as we make our way into Wednesday night into Thursday, showers and thunderstorms could return to our area. Temperatures will be a little bit cooler as well. And then over the Memorial Day weekend, we could see off and on rain chances. We'll take a look at your seven day forecast in just a little bit, but our highs today around 74 degrees in Elmira, a little bit cooler in Binghamton at 69 degrees, 72 in Ithaca and also in Watkins Glen and also in Corning. So very pleasant conditions out there. Temperatures a little bit above normal. As we make our way into tomorrow, we're going to see more of the same pleasant conditions. We're going to see high pressure continue to dominate our weather, state keeping us pretty dry out there. But if you take a look just to our west, there is a low pressure system that will 
ride in. It will bring the chances of showers and thunderstorms into our area by Wednesday night. Here's a look at your forecast. Tonight we drop down to around 48 degrees, mostly cloudy conditions, and it will be a little bit chilly. Some patchy fog developing in the overnight hours tomorrow. We are going to start off with fog, but then that will give way to a little bit of sun, just maybe a mix of clouds in our sky, but temperatures will be quite nice out there. The winds will be coming from the south southeast at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. But then Wednesday night into Thursday, as that storm system makes its way into our area, is going to bring some heavy rain with it and some thunderstorms as well. Temperatures will be cooling down with a cold front that will come through. So uh, we are going to see highs only in the mid 60s for the most part. And that will be the situation on Friday with the co continuing uh, rain chances. And then as we head toward the Memorial Day weekend, things will start to improve. Maybe a shower or two on Saturday, but temperatures will climb up to around 75 degrees, 74 for the end of the weekend with cloudy conditions. And then as we make our way into early next week, we're going to stay with temperatures mainly in the 70s. So it will be pretty nice out there. A few clouds on Monday, and it looks like maybe some rain and drizzle possible on Tuesday. But overall, it looks like it won't be all that bad. Maybe just a light rain sprinkle across the area. But tomorrow is going to be another beautiful day before the rain gets here. Well, we like the beautifulness. Yes, we definitely do. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. All right. $58 million worth of renovations are set to begin soon at Elmira Corning Regional Airport Terminal. And because of that, this glider on loan from the National Soaring Museum will return to its home on Harris Hill. And crews will be taking it down tonight after the last flight at 940. The glider was used to train World War II pilots and has been suspended over the airport's security screening area for more than 20 years. Renovation plans for the terminal do not include the glider, so it will be placed on exhibit at the National Soaring Museum in Elmira, which is home to one of the largest collections of gliders and sailplanes in the world. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for watching Big Fox News. I hope you have a wonderful evening.